what's up snipers and welcome back to our Minnesota Wild GM mode. So in last episode we took on a very tough team in the Edmonton Oilers with a 98 Connor McDavid and we actually managed to sweep them and now we've won 11 in a row. Our last loss came back up here in round one of game number four against the Anaheim Ducks which was a 2-1 game but since then we've been on fire and we're now in the Stanley Cup finals against the Boston Bruins who have some great players like Philip Zadina, who's a 90-something. They also have Charlie McAvoy, who's a 92, closer to his retirement. And also, uh, I forget his first name. I think it's like Reginald Reza. He's like an 89 or something like that, and he just came back from injury. So it's going to be a tough team to face, but we should be able to beat them considering their regular season record was pretty crappy. I'm hoping we could get this done, um, obviously, because this would be our first championship. So... Let's see how it goes. Game one on home ice. Because home ice is huge in the Stanley Cup Finals. So first period and it's a 2-1 game for Boston. So DeBrusque opens the Stanley Cup scoring. Dumba answers but Vicentine has given Boston the lead after one. Shots are 13-8. Second period and it's a 4-2 game now for Boston. I'm not liking this. Jacob Fors back to Carlson scores, and then Urkramps gets us back within one goal, but then Gabo is going to give them that two-goal lead to go into the third. Come on, guys, we need to play better defense than this, and Gabo is going to make it 5-2. to two. God damn it. Not how we wanted to start off the Stanley Cup Finals. This will be our first loss in 11 games. Yeah, 6-2, to two, Fors back to Carlson, but Kaprizov makes it a 6-3 game. Power play, we don't score power play for them it's a long one too and we kill it off but we lose six to three in game one not how we wanted to start off this series at all considering this is the Stanley Cup finals so our goal is Dumba from Ruchin, Urkramps from Kaprizov and Ruchin and Kaprizov from Hodges and Dumba I think it said yeah all their players three stars so that was a pretty bad first game. I'm not going to change anything with the lines just yet, but I, if we lose this game by a bad score, I'm definitely going to change the lines up a bit. So, game two, come on, let's have a bounce back game, Corson. You let in six goals last game, let's bounce back from that game. First period, scoreless, there you go. Okay, that's a good bounce back period. But we're being outshot 13 and 19, or not 13 and 19, 13 and 9. Second period, oh my goodness, Corson. He lets in three goals in that second period. That is not good. Fours back at Carlson again. DeBrusque and Nick Ritchie, the former wild player. Seriously, guys, how are we playing this bad against a team that was really bad during the regular season? Zadina makes it 4-0. Yeah, we're going to some lining just because we've had 10 goals in the first two games of the Stanley Cup Finals. There you go. Bear Schultz gets one, make it a 4-1 game, but it's way too late. And we're going to drop their first two games on home ice. So we need to in Boston or else we're going to be on the brink of elimination. Shit, this is not how I wanted to start the Stanley Cup Finals at all. So let's make some line changes. Ten goals in two games is way too much to allow in. Considering we were playing so good on that 11 game winning streak, I knew that we were, were going to all of a sudden drop a game considering we won 11 in a row. So... Urkrams, you've been good on that line. Wait, how's the plus minus on that line? It's good. The second line is pretty good as well. It's probably the bottom six. Um, hmm. Haas is an 80 at the draw. Grandland's an 80. We're going to try and do something like that. And yeah, we'll do that. So we're going to move Haas up to play with Sure. We're going to move Kilger down, even though Kilger played great against, I think it was Edmonton or Chicago. And then we'll put Grandland as the center. And yeah, that's good like that. Is it the defensive core? No, their defensive core is really strong, especially that Hodges and Dumbo pairing. Yeah, I don't think it's the defensive core. I think it's just the forwards. Maybe it's our penalty kill. Let's see, how is our penalty kill looking? Um, yeah, maybe it's just his Hex there. Let's replace Hecht. You know he's a grinder and he's solid defensively. Let's see, who is good defensively out of these guys? Albaline. Uh, he's not that bad. 
We have Suri on the pellet kill. No, he's not on the pellet kill. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to throw in Larry Suri on the pellet kill. And we're going to give Hawes the wing instead. There you go. Yeah, I think that's the move we're going to move. Or <laughs> not move we're going to move. Move we're going to make. Hopefully it helps us bounce back in this series because I don't want to lose the Stanley Cup Finals after having such a great year so far. So, let's have a bounce back game, guys. We let in 10 goals in two games. We could come back from this. I know we can. We came back from a 3-1 series deficit. We could come back from a 2 nothing series deficit for sure. So, game three here in Boston at the TD Garden. First period. There you go, boys. Fitzgerald picking up two goals. Thank you, Eric. Second period, and they get two. God damn it. We give up a 2 nothing lead as Chen and Huskins get them on the board and they're being out or they're out shooting us 19 to 15 come on guys don't let this get away from us power play come on Fitzgerald no oh, we don't score maybe it's our power play unit shots are pretty even last 10 minutes of the third period here this is a tight game last three minutes now come on Kaprizov you're like a third period hero guy and we're going to overtime this is a huge overtime. Our season pretty much is on the line. Because if we lose this game in overtime, we're going to have to win four in a row. So it's going to be tough if that happens. So come on, Kaprizov. You could come through. Somebody on our team. Power play. End it five on three. You got to end it now. And we don't score on the five on three, but we get another power play. And now we're going to end it as Andrew Urkramps, who we picked up in free agency, ends the game. And we are back in this series. That was a huge goal from Urkramps. That first line played really good that game. Holy crap. I thought we weren't going to get the win after we had that 5-on-3 power play. Because we should have scored on that 5-on-3, but we didn't. And then we scored on the power play afterwards. So we are back in this series. Going to keep the lines the same. Hopefully we can win this game and have a tie series going back home. As we apparently were a really good home team during the regular season. So this is just as important as last game, guys. Let's take it. First period, and we got the lead. Larry Sure, who we put on the penalty kill, makes it a 1 0 lead. Second period, yes, boys. Larry Sure again, nicely done. And the team has a 2 0 lead in the third period, even though we're being outshot by like 10 shots. Looks like Corson's trying to battle us back into the series, which is great after having a bad first two games. Kilger scores, Ruchin scores, and we're going to have a tie series going back home. So. Thank God for our team bouncing back from those first two games. I thought we were going to eventually get swept, and Kilger gets another his second at night, and we are going to win by a score of 5 nothing in Boston. Nicely done. So, Sure from Kaprizov, Sure from Grandland in Dumba, Kilger from Grandland in Albuin, Ruchin from Schultz and Sure, and Kilger from Albuin and Ruchin. Three stars, Corson with 35 saves. Suri the second star and Kilger the third star. So it's anybody's series now. Both teams are two games away from winning the Stanley Cup. So let's see if we could actually get a win here in the Stanley Cup Finals on home ice and have a chance to win the cup in Boston. So here we go, boys. Game number five. This is a huge game too. First period. It's a scoreless first period. Shots 14-11. As Corson's been great for the last two games. He's not allowed a goal in four periods now. Second period, there you go. Bruce Ruchin, and it's a 1-0 lead for us going into the third. Come on, Corson, light them down, light them down. Or whatever that means. <laughs> light them out, I should say. Shut them out. Last 10 minutes of the third period, 5-on-3 penalty kill, and we kill it off. Sure, may be on there killing it off goodly, and Kilger scores, and we have a 2-0 lead. Are we going to go one game away from winning the Stanley Cup? Yes, we are, as Urkramps gets an empty netter, and we have battled back to take the series lead going back to Boston. So, Ruchin from Albuin and Urkramps, Kilger from Greenland and Albuin, and Urkramps from Fitzgerald and Schultz. Back-to-back -back shutouts for Darcy Corson. He's made 88 saves in the last two games. All right, is it 88 saves? No, it's 68 saves. My bad. 68 saves in the last two games. And now we are one game away from winning our first ever Stanley Cup. Holy crap. So we are one game away. 
if we have a chance to win it, I'm going to go into the game and you guys can watch like the last couple minutes again like I did with the conference finals. So, game six. Let's end it tonight, guys. First period, nicely done. Kirill Kaprizov. And we're being out shot, but we have the lead. Second period, and it's a 2-1 game for us. Granlin, maybe with a cup winning goal there, if we're lucky. So let's go into the third period now. We're going to go into four-time simulation at the last 10 minutes, and then hopefully... Oh, Nico Hiche ties the game up. God damn it. Come on, guys. we got to let the lead back. Kirill Kaprizov. Oh, my God. Saprikin, wait, isn't that our former player? Wasn't that the guy that we had in the age? Oh, oh my God. No <laughs> one let it be. Okay, last six minutes now. We are one goal away from maybe winning a Stanley Cup here. Power play. And we don't score on it. Why are we going to go to OT? Uh, I'm going to intervene. We're going to watch the last bit of the third period and see if we could actually win this cup. So it's a tie game, so we might not win it. So if we don't, I'll see you guys with game seven. Otherwise, I'll see you guys at the end of it with the recap. So... This is going to be a crazy finish, so hopefully you guys like this, and I'll see you guys in a sec. If you're just with us, it's been a tremendous bit of hockey so far, and more to come. Austin's got that neutral zone faceoff. Takes that pass at center, see if we can move something. Nearing the final minute of regulation. Gives it over to the point. One minute left. Moves to the corner. Minnesota's continuing on in the defensive zone. That puck's loose, mishandled. The roadblock held. Got it at the point. Side to side they go. Strong shooter against a strong goaltender, and the guy with a trapper won. Minnesota's playoff chances are greatly enhanced by having one of the top goal scorers in the league in their lineup. It's difficult to score in the regular season, even more so in the playoffs, because there's no room. Yet here he sits at the top of the league. They win the draw. Let's see if it pays off. Shifts to the backhand and shoots. Right on his stick from the left wing. Minnesota's carrying it on through center ice. Shoots one. Shot deflected. Looking to headman up the wing. Good intercept. Minnesota's moving the puck up the wing. Shoots one. Collected by Riza. Oh, broke it up. A hammer shot from the point. Score! That's the hat trick. There won't be many on the ice, if any, but he's got three goals. We're so far up here, Doc. I'm not sure if that puck got deflected. Let's go down the ray and see what he saw at ice level. Not only was the puck deflected, Enzo, it's through traffic as well. You're going to see on the replay that the goaltender's fighting A, the traffic. He's got to get into position for it. Right when he thinks he's got the puck at him, the puck changes directions. He just can't catch up. Minnesota goal is 15th of the playoffs. Scored by number seven. And the game is over. The series is over. Minnesota's won the Stanley Cup. Do you believe the celebration going on?
So there you guys have it. We have won our first ever Stanley Cup and what a way to have it happen. Kirill Kaprizov ends up ending the game with like a couple seconds left, getting his hat trick in the end of the third period. There was like, I think 3.7 seconds maybe left in the game, but he gets the hat trick and he ends up winning the Smythe with 15 goals, 10 assists, 25 points in the playoffs. Here is the cup winning goal. So it's a nice pass from Knubel over to Hodges, who's going to let this slap shot rip through the slot. And a nice right there by Kaprizov deflects it right underneath of, what's his name, Beach. And it gets right through and just barely gets across the line. And Kirill Kaprizov has gotten us our first ever Stanley Cup. And he also gets his first con smite to add to a bunch of goal tolls and other stuff that he's gotten with us. Wow, what a way to end it. So the three stars in that game, obviously Kaprizov taking the first star. Uh, Dumba gets the second star, and Nico Hishe the third star. Wow, what a game. That is definitely a goal to remember. I'm going to definitely have that in the recap, I think, because what a clutch player to come through with a game-winning goal with 3.7 seconds left. And we finally win our first Stanley Cup too. And Granlund and Dumbo will both have a Stanley Cup at least before they retire. So now the final thing we need to do for this episode. Take a look at all our player stats and the awards. And then also see who we lost to retirement. I'm going to quickly show you guys at least the player stats. I'm going to go through Granlund and Dumbo just in case they retire. Because I don't want to forget these stats. So... Let's see, so Kaprizov, 25 points, 21 games, Urkramps, 18 and 21, Sure 17, Dumba, 16, Fitzgerald, 15, Kilger had like 14 as well, 7 goals too. This entire team actually played really good, Alvaline had 13 points even. Damn, really happy with them, Granlin, 7 points, there's all his stats, I'm just going to get that for probably his career wrap up. Everybody else shouldn't retire, well Dumba might. Dumba, those 16 points. What a great defenseman. He's still listed as a top four, so I don't think he's going to retire. But you never know. And then our man between the pipes, Corson. Let's say how his playoffs was. 15-5. and five. He was probably the guy that would have won it if uh, Kaprizov wouldn't have played so good. 15-5, and five, like I said. Four shutouts, a 9.33 save percentage, and at 2.07 goals against. Winning his first Stanley Cup at 29, and McQuaid winning his first Stanley Cup as a rookie and 23 years of age. So what a performance from our team, and we have won our first ever Stanley Cup. So now let's take a look at the awards for the season. We also won the President's Trophy this season. So it was a great year in Minnesota, so Stanley Cup champions, the Minnesota Wild. President's Trophy winning team is also us, and then we also get the Clarence S. Campbell. Boston gets the Prince of Wales. Player awards, Connor McDavid, the Art Ross, and the Hart. 
Ruchin gets to Norris this year. Nicely done. Bruce Ruchin winning his first Norris with a 60-point regular season. Connor McDavid gets the Bing. Rodney gets the Calder. Kaprizov getting that Conn Smythe. Nicely done. Kirill. Murray gets the Vesna and the Jennings. Quenville gets the Masterton. McDavid gets the Selkie and the Lindsay. And Tarasenko gets the Richard. Now let's check the AHL. See if there's any of our AHL guys. No, none of our AHL guys won awards. What about the teams? Okay. So what a great year for the Minnesota franchise. But hopefully we don't lose anybody too huge to retirement this year. I'm assuming we're going to lose Greenland, but I'm not 100% sure of that. So let's just sim up to the draft. See who we lose to retirement. Hopefully nobody too bad. Charlie Davison is back from his injury. He broke his leg and missed the entire playoffs. Same with Kenny Morrison. Or not Kenny Morrison. What's his name? I forget his name, but someone... Danny Morrison. Yeah, Danny Morrison. He missed also the like a lot of the playoffs. But we still managed to win the Stanley Cup. So both those guys get their name on the trophy. So let's see who retired. So... Nobody retired, so we could still bring back Ramland and Dumba for another year. Gold team wise, Corson did not retire, at least. I was hoping he wouldn't, considering he's only 29. You never know, some players might retire early. In the entire league, Sagan retires, Jamie Benn retires, we eliminated him from the playoffs, Doughty retires, O'Reilly, any former players of ours. Victor Arvidsson hangs them up, 788 points. He retires with the Tampa Bay Lightning, who is the team we traded him to. So, glad to see he spent the rest of his career with the team that we traded him to. Um, anybody else that used to play in this organization? No, it doesn't look like it. Nobody that I remember. I think Mersh played with us for a bit. I don't remember for sure. What about goaltending? Oh, Mike Riley retired. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, so Martin Jones, Malcolm Subban, Anton Forsberg, Oscar Dance, so on like that. So those are the retirements for this year. Um, but yeah, we won our first ever Stanley Cup, and I think that's going to do it for this episode almost. Oh yeah, did I check the AHL's player stats? Yeah, I did. Okay, let's just check the progress reports, and then we'll end it. Or we'll show you guys the draft class, and then it'll be it for this episode. So... Urkramps has jumped to a 92. Nice. Schultz is up to a 90. Wow. Corson 88. Rujan 87. Kaprizov has dropped to an 86. Um, Fitzgerald's still an 85. Dumba is dropped to an 85 as well. Suri is an 84. Hodges is an 83. Okay. Granlin's down to a 7 or an 81 now. He's up to, but he's probably gonna retire after this year. Um, let's see. What about goaltending? Okay, let's just check the minors for growth. So, Pittis is up to a 67. Nice. He's going to be definitely playing probably up to an NHL ready in the next two years or so. Fletcher. Okay. Everybody else, not much. Defenseman. Tillett is up to a 76. Nice. He's going to be probably NHL bound maybe next season or the season afterwards. He was up to a 76. Seabrook still there. Bull. What about that Martin Diet? 61 overall for our medium elite defenseman. Here's his individual stats now. How did he play in the playoffs, actually? He's a defensive defenseman, so he might not put up much numbers. I know he had seven assists in the playoffs. Uh, he had no points in the playoffs, so well. There's their defensive prospects. Golgoski 69, Kulombe is up to a 64, Castles, okay, left wingers, Yolonen is a 76, Lemaire is still saying a 75, and he's listed now as a medium bottom 6, wow, this guy never turned out to be anything for a first rounder, um, Rita is up to a 60, nice, since we didn't even sign that guy, I don't think yet, um, center wise, Cormier is up to a 67, wow, he's growing good too. Okay, so we have a lot of good prospect growth and NHL player growth. And we have the Stanley Cup too. So that's that. And our final thing, the draft class, even though it doesn't really matter as much. Let's see who's available. So anybody that's supposed to go late in the first round. Because we don't care really about the others. 
Okay, let's see. First slash second round. Okay, so there is some stuff available, but it's not a deepest draft like it said during the season. So, anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this episode of our Minnesota Wild GM Mode. So, next episode, we'll have the off season, and hopefully we can get back to winning another Stanley Cup again next year. So, thank you guys so much for watching. See you guys next time. Thank you.